Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Dennis Peña from Stand Deportes. My question is simple. The situation of Don Ramirez, if he ready to, are you ready to match Colombia, to play against Colombia? Do you have the formation that we're going to be playing against Colombia tomorrow? Hello, good afternoon, Roderick. Well, he's been training for two days now, 100% with the group. And he is electable for that 11 players formation. Hello, Thomas Fariñas, Valentina Peña for, uh, for Radio Colombia, for the coach. Maybe in Colombia we make the mistake of underestimating a little bit our adversaries when in terms of individualities, Colombia has clearly an advantage. What can we expect from this Panama? Can we expect a match more similar to the one against Uruguay, against the USA. How would you describe what you're going to take to the field against Colombia? And what is that condition of being less favored will be, could be used in a favorable way and how? The fact of being less favored, let's say, does not give you much of an advantage, honestly. I think that we have to do what we have done in our previous matches, being ourselves and trying to take the rhythm of the game that we are interested in. And, well, we want very much from what we did in the previous games, but with a lot of respect for Colombia, for sure. I think that it is not crucial to what we do before the match. Well, they are 11 players. We have to work as we have done. Good afternoon, coach from Univision. One of the questions that we asked the players from the week, during the week, since they started the cup, you were not favored to move to the next phase, but not, not, net fa not favored to beat Colombia on the papers. If you don't have that pressure, have you seen the how you feel that and how have you seen the group during these days? Well, I'm glad that the players are not suffering this pressure. As a coach, I demand the most of myself, of the technical team and of the players. And we have been able to move to the next phase due to our good football and our good results. And now what we have to face ahead is a match as the one against Colombia if we want to have uh, the option to move to semifinals. Uh, Jeff Carlisle with ESPN. Uh, la pregunta en inglés, por favor. Um, where does this game rank in terms of the biggest games in Panama's history? And given such a big occasion, how have you tried to, to keep your team calm but still focused uh, heading into the match? Well, the, the most important thing is, as you said, to be calm, uh, knowing what we have reached until, until now. And that this game is a big opportunity to make even more history than we did before. Uh, how to to range this game, I think it's uh, the same as, uh, op yeah, I will not say like a, a World Cup uh, qualifying, uh, but at least in our point of view, is something historical and something we, we have to enjoy. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, Jaime Dinas from Telepacifico. El 101.9, solo éxitos Candela in Bogotá. Sir, this instance of the details in your previous analysis, what did you extract from the changes that Colombia presented from one match to the other between Paraguay, Costa Rica and Brazil? And for the player, are you aware that out of the six goals that the Colombian national team has scored, four were from the defenders due to their variability, especially when the ball starting from the ground? My best wishes for you. Thank you very much. Well, analyzing Colombia, <clears throat> of course, the quality is uh, beyond discussion. We know they are great players in great leagues. They compete quite well. We have had less pressure, maybe, in some of the matches. For example, the match against Brazil. Well, they played to death, let's say, trying to avoid 
Uruguay and try to play against us, but we have analyzed the rest of the matches in the group phase, and we have seen that if we make a good use of the small errors that Colombia can make, well, we have options, but at the same time, we have to be very consistent, very efficient at the time of defending as at the time of being offensive. Well, during the week we have worked very hard. We know that Colombia is a team that is very strong physically. We have to be fully focused 100% during the match in the 90 minutes to be able to counter their game. Ronnie Vargas, El Marcador. This is a match of the great leagues. Colombia and Uruguay are candidates to the to win the cup. Tactically, has, has Thomas Christensen thought of this match, knowing that we are also analyzed, knowing that Colombia has also put all of its intelligence looking into Panama and finding our weaknesses. How do you see that for tomorrow? Have you enjoyed this, or are you 1,000% worried about how to going out to the pitch and looking after that semi-final? Well, here, we're here to compete. We're here to go as far as possible. With all of our possibilities, we are not going to take anything for granted. If they want to look down on us, that's their thing, but we are going to take this match very seriously. How have we tried to mentalize the players? Well, the same way that we did against Uruguay, especially for the second half, the U.S. and Bolivia. How did we get those results? And we are trying to be ourselves all the time. The motivation... Well, I don't need to tell them anything. They know that they have made history, but we don't want to stop there. We want to try and go a step further, and hopefully we can do that. Raul Ochoa, Marcador. What do you say to players before this match, many Colombian figures, how to prevent that media pressure for players that play in the big leagues, as it was the case of the match against Uruguay, and also for Farinha, after three years of being Liga Pro, you're not playing Copa America. How do you feel? Are you fulfilling your dream? Yes, of course I am. Well, at the personal level, I think it has been very important to be in this Copa America, this development in the last year. I've been doing it quite well. It has been an important process, thank God. And the coach that gave me the opportunity to show my gameplay, I'm doing it as God has sent me to. And how was your question again, think, please? Well, how do you, what do you tell players? Well, Farinha said it greatly, especially when the ball is stopped. The tactical aspect, I will not talk about that here. Everything that we've been working yesterday and today, how to manage a national team that needs to play its best. I hope that this is shown tomorrow and our work is reflected here. That's the key to fight back against Colombia. Coach, good afternoon. Julian Collazos from 90 Minutos, Colombia. I wanted to ask a question, and I want a more personal than professional answer. Did you prepare yourself mentally, psychologically, understanding that the group and the way in which the cup was unfolding, you would probably going to have to face Colombia or Brazil or maybe two teams that without a doubt historically have set an important difference in football and have conveyed something to players from before the cup started, always looking from before the cup started and what is the trait that for you stands out of the Colombian team. And for the player, I would like to have your idea of the cup that James Rodriguez has done in the group phase. Well, let's see. We did not think, actually, in the match if it's going to be Colombia or Brazil. I like to go match after match when the draw the lots and we went to Miami and we got Uruguay, US and Bolivia. Well, there we saw a bit of a dark landscape before us. But getting here, 
with all the players lost, we looked at all the options of moving forward, but at any time, or I personally did not think about Colombia or Brazil in that regard. And well, I am not doing that either now. I will not think about semifinals. We have to think about this game. Regarding what you asked, at the personal level, James, I think that uh, James is a very important player for his team. He's a very smart player. We have to face him. It's also our turn to face him, and we need to know. I need to measure myself against him and the other players. Here, good afternoon. Juancho Villaverde, ESPN, for Edgardo and for coach as well. Edgardo, your performance has made you be a starter since the beginning. What do you think individually and as a group? What has helped you to feel so comfortable as we have seen you in the pitch? And coach, this week has been different. Your training has been different with a different mood. Players know that they move beyond the group phase. What have you noted before, besides the footballistical aspect that you have liked? Well, the most important thing is qualifying to quarterfinals, making history that has also maybe taken a bit of pressure from the players in this last days, we have intensified our trainings for once again recovering that focus that we want for the match. We had the chance to have one extra day to prepare for this match, even if the temperatures have been very high and it's been very difficult to demand physically from the players, though I think that the mental aspect and the physical recovery have been key these days. I think that what has really helped me here with the national team, with the group, it has been the other players with more experience, Godoy, Waterman, Miller, and the trust that the coach has given me. I think that all has been key so that I could have a good performance in the field, feel good, and do a good job. Carlo Vidal, RPC, Thomas. Against Uruguay, we talked about a lot of fear, a lot of respect in the first minutes, in the first period, that there was a lot of respect. You're now going to face the national team of Colombia that is similar in, to Uruguay in terms of figures, in terms of names, of important elements that the players saw and what are we going to do so that this does not happen again in the first period? Edgardo, even if Panama does not have the pressure of being the favorite of uh, all eyes looking at Colombia as a favorite, but there are a lot of positive comments. What happens sometimes with the national team is that the, the more they are praised, they focus on that. So what do you do during these days after you see a lot of very positive comments? Well, the match against Uruguay, of course, one of the favorites to win the cup is, yes, maybe we weren't out to the pitch with too much respect because there were players such as the Farinha himself who had their first match, their debut in the major leagues, and they had the turn to dance with the Mafia of Darwin Nunez, and tomorrow they will have another dance with Luis Diaz. So welcome to the Copa America. But well, he is trained. He has been showing, despite his youth, that commitment, that quality with the line of different defense, and they have been evolving quite well. And, well, that's what they have to do, enjoy it and try to make uh, the least errors possible. Uh, hopefully, we can move to the next uh, phase. Well, the comments that we have received during this week and these days have been very positive. And personally, the group is taking this in a very positive way to be encouraged to do everything as good as possible. The attitude that we have is very important and it's going to be helpful for this match. Good afternoon. Marino Velázquez from El Programa Deportes from Boston. 
you've talked about the players, Colombia and so forth, but I want to ask you both, what do you think about how Colombia has been accompanied from the supporters in all of the stadiums? Is that going to play against you, against Panama, because of the love and courage that supporters show for Colombia? Thank you very much and all the success. Well, this is Comebol. In CONCACAF is the same. We play against Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, U.S. We are always playing outside our stadium. What was very nice was in Orlando. In Orlando, feeling the Panamanian national anthem from so many Panamanians. That was amazing. And that was playing in a more neutral field, let's say. We wouldn't say playing at home. But... CONCACAF with the Gold Cup, Copa Oro, has given us that experience to the technical staff and players, the coaching staff for the final of the Copa Oro against Mexico. There were 80,000 Mexican supporters and two, 3,000 Panamanian ones. It's another experience, a situation that we have to go through. We have to live with that, and tomorrow it's going to be the same. As coach said, Wherever we go outside our country, we are always visiting, and tomorrow it's probably going to be like that. With the experience that we have, we need to face this match. Coach, again, I wanted to ask you, of course, in Nations League, things did not work out uh, the way you wanted. Where does this leap of quality come in the last few months? In the Nations League, I mentioned that due to the dates, we have a lot of players that are in the Central America, South America, North America, where there is a preparation in facing certain tournaments and players cannot reach to compete at, in these tournaments at 100%, and this shows. So for this tournament, such as Copa América or Copa Oro, we get in better conditions to compare with more teams in terms of performance, in terms of the high intensity, the miles traveled, and so forth. Well, we are below them, and that's where we also need to look for something that can help us even that. Well, how can we do that? Well, with players in Europe, with players in great teams, so that they have the habit of this very exigent gameplay every week. Hi, coach. I'm going to ask in Portuguese. Yes. Um, there's, of course, you think of Colombia at the time, but Copa America as a whole is putting all eyes on coaches. My question is about Vinicius Jr. today, accompanying him in the Copa America, and uh, for, due to everything that he produced in the European football, he has condition of being golden ball. And another question that Dorival Jr. confirmed the formation, and he confirmed Hendrik in the, in the team. Do you know Hendrik from Europe? What do you think of Hendrik? Well, Vinicius, you may know Vinicius, we know him all. He's a great player. Let's see. What can I tell you about him right now? He might have been, or it might have been a bit frustrating in the match against Colombia, getting a card which does not let him be in the field for the next match. There are many remarks regarding the attitude, the personality aspects, but, well, each player is as he is. If he were my player, maybe I would tell him a few things for his own good. Maybe he that could also benefit the team. And Roque Junior. Ah, Hendrik. Oh, okay. Well, he... He is very young. He has the possibility to compete in many tournaments. He also does not have to rush too much. It's normal that a player with his characteristics and now in Real Madrid, he wants to play. And when the results are not accompanying well, we 
you feel as an offensive player, you feel a bit left aside, but the thing is working, 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 and waiting for the time. I'm sorry, I, we are not getting the question. Golden ball, for whom? Vinicius, oh man. Well, he's won the Champions League with the Madrid. He's had a great season. He does have options. He does have uh, chances uh, due to his merits, his titles. Well, he might be there, but let's see today. Uh, these days, today Spain got classified and maybe another player that has won the Champions and the League, if they can win the Eurocopa or, or another player from his same team, maybe. I don't know. It's hard at the end. The decision we take that we also have our vote as coaches for certain awards, but it's complicated. Yes, Carlos Meneses from AAF. This is the first week that I've been able to accompany you, and I'm, it drew my attention the intensity from the first time, even that the part open to press. I follow other national teams, Mexico, Brazil. There's minutes open to press are, I wouldn't say lost, but maybe, yeah. I wanted to ask you. There's a phrase, if you play as you train, and if this is something that you underline training with intensity because the results are there in the end. Well, I like the phrase, and I try to apply that to the maximum possible. Farinha knows that. I don't let him relax too much. And that's it. We need to imprint some habits, we need to acquire habits such as intensity in our trainings because maybe in their clubs they are not having that. And for the short time I've been with them, which have been many days now, but well, we need to make good use of this time. Well, thank you very much. This is the end of the press conference. Good afternoon, everyone.